Rodolfo Guzman Huerta is arguably one of the most famous men in the history of Mexico, and yet, rather paradoxically, there are few people who know his name, and even fewer people who know his face. This is because for almost five decades, Huerta was only known to the public as a silver-faced luchador called El Santo. And in that time, he only once removed his mask while in public. The story of El Santo, which for non-Spanish speakers literally translates to The Saint, begins in the Mexican city of Tulacingo, where Huerta was born in 1917. The fifth of seven children, Huerta had a modest structured upbringing, during which little of note happens, or at least not enough for it to be mentioned in any of the books about his life that we consulted. It's noted that Huerta first became interested in lucha libre when the sport was just making its first steps to become legitimized in the early 1930s after moving to Mexico City. Upon seeing the high-flying theatrics and athleticism of the various wrestlers who worked throughout the city, Huerta vowed to become a wrestler himself and immediately set about training in a local gym. Though Huerta led a storied, well-chronicled career, exactly when he made his first professional debut is a matter of some contention. However, it's largely agreed that he probably made his career debut shortly before his 17th birthday in 1934 under his own name. Over the next few years, Huerta fought under several different aliases and masks, variously referring to himself as the Red Man, El Hombre Rojo, the Black Demon, El Demonio Negro, and perhaps most infamously, the Bat 2, El Murcielago Dos. You see, wrestlers in Mexico, they tend to take their identities very seriously, and the name El Murcielago already belonged to another wrestler who objected to Huerta, referring to himself as El Murcielago Dos. And not wanting to offend another luchador, Huerta respectfully dropped the persona. Interestingly, although Huerta would later become an almost mythical figure in Mexican history for being a quintessential hero character, he initially wrestled as a rudo, a term that is roughly synonymous with the Western wrestling term heel. This basically means he played a bad guy who fought dirty and played up to the crowd's jeers and boos. However, this all changed in 1942 when Huerta took up the mantle of El Santo and began wearing his now iconic silver mask, the design of which was partially inspired by the eponymous Man in the Iron Mask from Alexander Dumas' novel of the same name. You can see our video, Who Was the Real Man in the Iron Mask, for more on that. El Santo made his wrestling debut on July 26, 1942, winning an eight-man battle royale using a series of high-flying acrobatic flips and throws that would become a cornerstone of his fighting style. Throughout the 1940s, El Santo's fame steadily grew, and he quickly adopted a persona as an honest, working man's hero who fought against corruption and evil, which inevitably endeared him to the Mexican populace. El Santo's fame was only bolstered by the increasing availability of televisions throughout the late 1940s and early 1950s. During this period, El Santo claimed a number of famous victories over older established wrestlers, including El Murcielago, the same wrestler he had once tried to emulate in his initial foray into the sport. El Santo's fame reached stratospheric levels when Mexican artist Jose G. Cruz began using his likeness in a comic bearing his name, which discussed his various heroic exploits like punching vampires and felling werewolves with explosive hurricanes. Yup. Despite the relatively low quality of the early comics, they proved to be quite popular, running for 35 years straight. After greedily eyeing the sales numbers of the comics, movie producers soon began approaching El Santo with offers for him to appear in films. The first of many offers came just months after the first El Santo comic was published in 1952, when the wrestler was offered the leading role in a movie called The Silver Masked Man. This was an endearing nickname that the public had taken to calling him. El Santo reportedly did didn't believe that the film could be a success and declined the part mainly to focus on his wrestling career. As El Santo predicted the film, it wasn't that popular. However, it did help establish the rather surreal luchador genre, a genre almost entirely endemic to Mexico that melded together elements of horror, sci-fi, action, and comedy, and also happened to star rippling Mexican men wearing luchador masks. El Santo was eventually persuaded to star in one of these movies in 1958 after witnessing the success of his comic. Over the course of the next 20 years, he became one of the most iconic and prolific stars of the entire genre, appearing in over 50 films in which he used his wrestling skills to defeat everything from aliens to the Nazis. These movies catapulted El Santo to an even more unprecedented level of fame for a luchador, and their popularity saw him become a household name in his native Mexico, even amongst those who had no interest or knowledge of wrestling.
While his many multimedia appearances undoubtedly played a part in his fame, almost since his debut, El Santo has always maintained a certain mystique around him by never removing his mask in public. His dedication to maintaining the mystery around his identity was such that he even had a chinless mask made so he could eat without taking the mask off on set during meals. He also had his own voice dubbed over in any movies where he spoke so that even his voice was disguised. In the film El Hacha Diabolica, which called for El Santo to remove his mask and show his face to the film's love interest, he agreed on the condition that his character do so while facing away from the camera. Even then, he still got a stand-in to actually perform the scene because he didn't want the actress to see what he looked like. In all of his other films, Santo similarly demanded that his character never appear unmasked, regardless of how much sense it made or what his character's role was. Perhaps the most humorous example of this was in the 1958 film Santa Contra Hombres Infernales, in which Santo played an ordinary police sergeant who inexplicably wore a luchador mask in every single scene. Santo's dedication to maintaining his identity extended beyond his films and into his private life. For example, when El Santo took Jose Cruz to court for trying to replace him in his own comic, knowing that he couldn't appear in court wearing his mask, he instead opted to cover his face in bandages and don a large pair of sunglasses before explaining to the judge that that had been in a wrestling accident. El Santo won this case, if you're wondering. Stories like these led to rumors that El Santo's passport contained a photo of him wearing his mask. While not true, in reality, Santo did have a standing agreement with US Customs to only remove his mask in a private room so that only the customs agent would see his face. The only known time El Santo ever broke his vow of secrecy happened about a year after his retirement from the world of wrestling. This happened in January of 1984 during a scheduled appearance on a popular Mexican talk show called Contrapunto. Ten minutes into the show, El Santo partially removed his mask without any prior warning or announcement, exposing his face publicly for the first time in his entire five-decade career. Ten days later, he died of a heart attack. El Santo's funeral was one of the biggest in Mexico's history, with hundreds of friends, many of whom turned up in masks as a sign of respect, and many thousands of fans coming to pay their final respects. As a final mark of respect and in compliance with his will, El Santo was buried wearing his trademark mask. So I really hope you found that video interesting. If you did, you know what to do. Smash that like button below and don't forget to subscribe. Also, we've got a podcast. It's called The Brain Food Show. If you just search Brain Food into Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you get your podcasts, you will find that. I think if you enjoyed this show, you'll probably like that podcast. So please do check it out. And as always, thank you for watching.